Hi, this is Bob Huggins. I'm sure everyone is proud of what the Bearcats accomplished this recent basketball season. Speaking for the coaching staff, I can tell you that we were especially pleased with the team's success, not only in what they achieved, but in how they achieved it. When we began preseason practice, we knew we had some talented players, but we were also aware that we had a lot of newcomers who would have to adapt quickly to our style of play, as well as their roles on the team. It's a tribute to these players that they were able to get both jobs done. They did whatever the coaches asked, and they did it unselfishly. The guys established some lofty goals for the season, and then they put the team ahead of themselves as they went out and reached those goals. What we were able to accomplish last season has us excited because of what we feel is the potential of the UC program. We are looking forward to even greater things in the future, and we hope you'll be with us in your support. For now, sit back and enjoy another look at 1991-92. was truly a dream season for the University of Cincinnati, one which saw the Bearcats return to the top of college basketball. The season featured a conference championship, a return to top 20 billing, and a trip to the Final Four. Hard as it is to believe, though, UC success might well have been spawned by a loss. Following a preseason setback to athletes in action, the team held a players-only meeting during which they established some lofty goals for the 91-92 campaign. Among them, a 23-4 regular season record, the Great Midwest Conference regular season championship, the Great Midwest Conference tournament title, and a berth in the Elite Eight of the NCAA tournament. To accomplish that end, the first objective was to work hard every day. It was that work ethic which helped the Bearcats accomplish their many milestones of this year's campaign. As the season unfolded, Bearcat fans were checking their scorecards to learn the new cast of characters. With only six returning lettermen and two starters, half the UC roster was made up of newcomers. One face quite familiar to the UC faithful was that of Herbert Jones. The scoring and rebounding leader plus MVP of the previous year's team, Jones showed that he had taken his game to even greater heights in the opening weeks of the season. The 6'4 senior was a deadly scorer from outside, oh my goodness. as well as within. He topped the 20-point mark in five of the first seven contests while recording four double-doubles. Herbert's play helped the Bearcats reel off seven straight victories. Not to be outdone, though, there were others who were keeping up with Jones. Jeff Scott, playing the best basketball of his career, scored a personal high 18 points to lead UC to a 20-point win over area rival Miami of Ohio, the series' widest victory in 30 years. And Jeff Scott going baseline. Good fake. And Nick Van Exel, one of the four newcomers from the junior college ranks, keyed Cincinnati's improvement in long-distance shooting. Van Exel came off the bench to spark the offense with his three-point marksmanship. And with Terrence Gibson, Anthony Buford, and Alan Jackson, they gave the Bearcats a lightning-quick backcourt arsenal capable of scoring on any defense. 
Cincinnati 7-0 start began to stir national attention, and the Bearcats' upcoming schedule provided an opportunity for them to prove they belonged among the nation's elite. UC's first test was 12th-ranked Michigan State. Some players build a reputation for rising to the occasion. Against Michigan State, Anthony Buford conducted a clinic. To this point in the year, Anthony had played more of a supporting role in UC's attack. Buford, though, stepped to the forefront against the Spartans, scoring a season-high 29 points. Cincinnati dominated the Spartans, leading by as many as 18 points in the second half. Michigan State, though, rallied to win the game on a last-second three-pointer. But the Bearcats left the game with the knowledge that they could play with anybody in the country. South Florida, UC's next foe, had attracted attention by beating Florida and Florida State the previous week. In front of a national television audience on New Year's Eve, the Bearcats responded to the challenge in a big way. Herb Jones scored 20 points, while the Bearcat defense picked apart South Florida, forcing 22 turnovers in an 80-60 loss. Cincinnati hosted Indiana, ranked 10th at the time before a capacity crowd in Shoemaker Center. The Bearcats raced to a 36-30 halftime lead, in part through the efforts of Corey Blunt. Blunt had been trying to establish himself as a force on the Bearcat front line. The 6'10 junior grabbed 11 rebounds against Michigan State and tallied 13 points in the South Florida win. Against the Hoosiers, Blunt scored 15 and hauled down a dozen rebounds. Indiana rallied, though, in the second half for an 81-60 victory. Cincinnati then invaded Tennessee's Thompson Bowling Arena, a very unfriendly place to visitors. The Bearcats' hounding defense had earned a reputation for shutting down the big scoring threats of their opponents. Tennessee All-American candidate Allen Houston became the latest victim when he was held to nine points, well under his 21.9 scoring average as UC notched a convincing 62-51 win. The Bearcats opened great Midwest Conference play with a 79-66 win over St. Louis. Buford tallied 25 points, while Allen Jackson tied a school record with six steals. Four days later, however, Cincinnati suffered one of its most lackluster performances of the season in falling to league favorite DePaul 75-66. The DePaul setback resulted in some serious soul searching. It also prompted the first changes in the starting lineup. Jeff Scott assumed the six-man role while Corey Blunt assumed Scott's center position. Terry Nelson, one of the team's best post defenders, joined the front line and Nick Van Exel replaced Alan Jackson at point guard. The changes ignited an eight-game win streak, the school's longest in 15 years. Cincinnati launched the streak with a 75-66 win over highly touted Memphis State. Herb Jones led the attack with 20 points, and Corey Blunt exploded for 18 rebounds as the Bearcats won the battle of basketball skills. Following a 40-point rout of Eastern Kentucky, UC faced Alabama-Birmingham, a team which had won 15 of its first 18 games. Buford scored 21, and Van Exel added 19 for a 76-52 win, which put them back into contention in the great Midwest race. Under 10 seconds, Alan Jackson knocked it down. Cincinnati's annual clash with crosstown rival Xavier doesn't need any catalyst to stir emotions on either side. Terry Nelson created a pregame brouhaha nonetheless when he boldly predicted that the Bearcats would blow out the Muskies. What a prophecy that turned out to be. UC jumped out to a 22-4 lead in route to a 93-75 win. Buford scored 12 of the Bearcats' first 22 points and matched his career high with 29. Throughout the eight-game win streak, nearly everyone contributed. The team's depth was emerging as a major factor in its success as fresh horses continued to wear down opponents. Alan Jackson came off the bench to help in UC's 71-57 win over Marquette with some timely scoring and defensive play. He scored 14 points and keyed the Bearcats' second-half rally in their win over St. Louis. 
Terrence Gibson, known more for his defensive skills his first two years as a Bearcat, emerged as an offensive spark from the bench. Gibson hit three straight three-point baskets in two and a half minutes to key a second-half rally against Dayton, which turned into a Bearcat dunkathon. Even Mike Reichenecker got into the act. Though the seven-footer's three-point attempts were wide of the mark, he showed his scoring power inside in the Brooklyn round. At 17-3, and three, Cincinnati could no longer be ignored. On February 10th, the Bearcats broke into the top 25 of the national polls for the first time in 14 years. UC entered ranked 24th by AP and 25th by USA Today CNN and reached top 20 status one week later. The Cats, who have been rated as high as fourth in the computer indexes, climbed steadily in the polls the remainder of the season. During the eight-game win streak, UC totally dominated the opposition. The Bearcats' average winning margin was 27 points. Their harassing defense frustrated opponents into committing nearly 23 turnovers per game. The win streak came to an end with a disappointing two-point loss to league leader DePaul. Suddenly, the Bearcats found their backs against the wall if they were to achieve their preseason objectives. Three of their four remaining contests were on the road, including rematches at Alabama-Birmingham and Memphis State. No haven for visitors. Cincinnati recovered with a 104-78 win at South Alabama. Herb Jones scored 17 consecutive points in the second half to blow that contest wide open. On senior night, the Bearcat faithful paid tribute to a coaching legend and bid an emotional farewell to five departing student athletes. Feisty Marquette held a six-point lead late in the second half. A trademark of UC victories, though, was a scoring surge in which the Bearcats would suddenly take command of the contest. The Bearcats once again applied that surge, scoring 18 straight points late in the game, lifting UC to a 70-59 victory. The Bearcat bench strength stepped up again in Birmingham as Terrence Gibson and Eric Martin combined for 21 to defeat UAB. UC became only the 15 in 56 game to defeat UAB on its home floor. Cincinnati entered Memphis State's Tomb of Doom, needing a victory to tie DePaul for the great Midwest Conference title. Corey Blunt broke a rim on this power dunk. And later, Nick Van Exel broke the Tigers' backs with his career-high 24 points. The victory gave UC a 23-4 regular season record. The first two goals had been realized. The Bearcats set their sights on goal number three when they headed to Chicago for the great Midwest tournament. Nick Van Exel found Chicago Stadium much to his liking. Nick scored 20 points and showed some brilliant floor leadership to lead UC past Marquette 62-49 in the semifinal. Van Exel penetrates, soars, and drains. And Cincinnati unleashed its hounding defense to turn back explosive Memphis State in the championship game. The Bearcats held League Player of the Year Anthony Hardaway to just seven points. Herb Jones, who applied much of the pressure on Hardaway, scored 21 of his own. For the last month of the season, it was not a case of whether Cincinnati would make the NCAA field, but how high the Bearcats would be seeded. That was answered when the tournament seedings CBS were announced. CBS presents the NCAA Basketball Championship Selection Show and the fourth-seeded Bearcats of the University of Cincinnati. That's not bad being that close to home, is it? The Bearcats, coached by Bob Huggins, won back-to-back -back titles back in 1961 and 62, and they'll take on the Fighting Blue Hens of Delaware, making their first tournament appearance. This is their first season. UC the quickly Atlantic dispatched the Blue Hens, 85-47, forcing 33 Delaware turnovers. 
Nick Van Exel continued his tournament attack with 18 points, six assists, and nine rebounds. The victory set up a rematch with Michigan State of the mid-December nightmare in which the Spartans overcame an 18-point deficit to hand UC a bitter loss. This time, though, the Bearcats wouldn't bend. Corey Blunt attacked the taller state front line while Anthony Buford scored from all over the floor. The 77-65 win propelled the Bearcats to the NCAA Sweet 16. UTEP is on an 11-2 run now. UTEP, Cincinnati's next foe, had proved its stay in the tournament by upsetting top-seeded Kansas. Though UC led by as many as 12 points in the second half, it could not bury the aggressive minor. Herb Jones led the Bearcats to a 69-67 win with 24 points. That victory, preceded by Memphis State's upset of Georgia Tech, set up an all-great Midwest regional final for the right to advance to the Final Four. Very few teams have posted four wins over the same opponent during the same season. The Tigers appear determined to keep it that way, though, through the first 12 minutes of the game. The Bearcats went on an 18-8 scoring run to take a 10-point lead at the half then coasted to an 88-57 win. Jones, with 23 points, was named the most outstanding player of the regional. Nick Van Exel, who scored 22 of his own, and Anthony Buford joined Jones on the all-tournament team. The Bearcats were going to the Final Four, their sixth appearance with Privilege Company and first since 1963. The city of Cincinnati was mesmerized. Hundreds of fans welcomed UC home from its shining moment in Kansas City. Oh, this is sweet. Yeah, it is. I, I didn't expect anything like this. Thousands rallied to send the team off to Minneapolis. All this afternoon. Their opponent, a Michigan team of five heralded freshman starters. Cincinnati's defense forced the Wolverines into committing 12 turnovers in the first half, which UC ruled 41-38. The Bearcats built a seven-point lead with 15 minutes to play, then suffered a scoring drought, during which they managed only two baskets in 12 minutes. UC refused to give up, though, when Michigan took a seven-point command, scrapping to the end of a 76-72 defeat. While Cincinnati's dream season ended with that setback, it did not end on a losing note. The 91-92 Bearcats set some lofty goals and then went about accomplishing them all. They advanced to the pinnacle of college basketball, and when they walked off the court, they had the determination to come back.
spins, tries from the baseline, got it! Van Exel over to Herb Jones, almost brings the crowd down. Jackson for three, and out. Van Exel. Cincinnati. He'll fire from three. Oh. Nick Van Exel. 